I had heard of Grayson, of course. Everyone had, leading up to those days before the fall of the London Tower. We all knew how it had begun. The night of the 15th of May, 1951. The night that James Grayson's life changed forever. What is he? It's his brother. Oh, God, not him. Get him out of here. Why? Oh, Jesus. Oh. Grayson, you know the regs. We can't let him live. I know the regs, damn it. His brother's death had sent Grayson over the edge. Grayson deserted his unit and went on a vendetta to destroy every Chimera conversion center he could find. Where the hell's your lieutenant? Where's Grayson? We don't know, sir. What do you mean you don't know? We can't find it him. It was his brother, sir. He found his brother. He just went crazy. He's gone. <sighs> Damn it. Follow me. I didn't meet Grayson personally until the trial, months after the fall of the Chimera Tower in London. Cartwright, as his commanding officer, had been called to testify. He became a hero to many. But desertion in time of war is a capital offense, and the law would make no exceptions. Grayson would have died in that prison, but for the intervention of an extraordinary woman Major, I can handle this. Right. We'll be just outside. <coughs> Private Grayson. My name is Rain Bouchard. I'm with the Marquis. I know who you're with. I am here to request your assistance. The resistance. <coughs> Resistance. You swam all the way across the channel, did you? Here to beg for help. Our mission is top secret. How did you know about this? Word gets around. We take out the tower in London. You want help with yours. Where is it? Paris? Berlin? Paris. But I am sure you knew that as well. So why are you here? Doing some last-minute sightseeing before heading back to France. You tell me. You want to know about the conversion centers? I told you. Word gets around. How many centers have you... destroyed? You want me to tell you everything I've seen? Everything I know before I stop seven or eight bullets in front of a firing squad? Is that it? No, actually. So you don't know everything. I am here to offer you a reprieve. So I get to be a grunt, working for the Marquis? Taking orders from frogs and abroad. No thanks, sister. You'd rather die? Here? Executed by your own people? What happened to you, Grayson? I've read your file. So you lost your family. Look around. We've all lost family. Look. 
What do you want to know? All right, yeah. I burned down some of their shithole conversion centers. So what? They're done. The menials, the Greyjacks. Every damn one of them's gone. There's no more of us to replace them. The last center I burned out was already abandoned. The Chimera are dead. Wrong again. That is twice if you're counting. They're hardly dead. They're evolving. My father has spent several years working with the Marquis. Developing a serum. This serum that can stop the new conversion process. We are close, James. With your help, your experience. I can get the materials we need to finish it. Oh. Tell Carroyd I want my brother's jacket back. At the time, we had no idea why his brother's jacket was so important to him. We had no idea how Bouchard convinced Grayson. But he agreed to work under the authority of the Marquis and became an integral part of Operation Overstrike. The plan was simple. Our intelligence corps agreed to send two squadrons to help the Marquis headquartered in Luxembourg. Stephen Cartwright, a major in the British Royal Marine Commandos, would lead the first squadron. I would lead the second squadron four hours later, but time was short. Over the past three years, the Chimera had been busy. Massive fortifications were being constructed all along the coastlines of Western Europe. Soon it would be impossible for anyone to get in or out. Our squadrons would use one of the few remaining open corridors through the Chimera defenses, a narrow strip over Rotterdam. Accompanied by the Marquis, our forces would cross Chimera lines into Luxembourg and then on to Paris. But we discovered too late that the Marquis were wrong. Bloody hell! Coming in hard! Rotterdam is crawling with Chimera! I left Death Row for this! Marquis Intelligence said Rotterdam was clear! That is anything but bloody clear! Mallory survived the jump and has established a rally point. He will have a plan to get us out. To hell with Mallory. The second squadron will be here in an hour. I'm gonna destroy that gun, and see they don't get the same welcome we got. Ben, thank God you're alive. Yeah, she's alive. Which I can't say about a lot of my friends dropping from the sky right now. Watch your tone, Private. You're in my army now. Yeah, right. I forgot. Your army, the Marquis, who just got first squadron shot to hell. Grayson, that's not fair. We didn't know... Don't explain yourself to the rank and file, Lieutenant. Come, gun towers have been spotted up and down the coastline. Your orders are to stay and secure this sector. That's a load of shit. Hands in the air. Just testing their reflexes. Pretty good. Way better than your intel, guys. <laughs> Bloody frog. Lieutenant Grayson, Major Cartwright asked me to find you. He needs your help, sir. You sure he asked for me? He must be in trouble. All right, let's go. I 
I can't reach the cargo compartment. Jansen, get down here on the double. Jansen! Jansen didn't make it, so you're stuck with me. Grayson, thank God. There are explosives on board that VTOL we can use to destroy those gun towers. Come down and help me reach them. Your exit is blocked. It's not one bloody thing, it's another. On my way to bail you out. It's enough plastic to blow those gun towers to high hell. Uh-oh. We've got company. Where the hell are you going? Major Cartwright, over here! Status report, Sergeant. We've located a gun tower entrance, but the sewers are heavily defended. It's suicide to go that way. Suicide mission? That's your speciality, Grayson. Or is it forte now? Either way, I get to blow something up. Private, lead Grayson through the sewers. Sergeant, come with me. Yes, sir. Oh, I get the rookie. Survivors of the attack were scattered all over Rotterdam. Communication had broken down completely, not only between the squadrons, but between ground forces and British command back in Dover as well. For the first hours, military discipline was reduced to a struggle for survival. How far to the water intake facility? Few clicks, beyond some canals and warehouses. Chock full of hybrids, drones and leapers. I've never seen so many Chimera, Lieutenant. In case you didn't hear, it's private Grayson now. Uh, that's a load of guff, sir. Watch out for the bloody boilers. They get too close and their heads explode. Boilers? I don't follow. Never seen them, eh? But they're Chimera all right, but they're plumbing's good, like a menial except under their knickers. The, the boilers are gals, not that different from the wife back home. Ugly as shite, and all you hear is constant whining. And if you ignore them, you come up and bloody go off on you. This was filled with water when we came through. Shite. Can't reach the exit. Wait, there's a flood control valve. I'll get it. This smells like a trap. Be careful. Watch out! Leapers! Get away from there! Oh god, no! Ah, Grayson! Stop it! Ah! While Cartwright and the Marquis forces had already launched assaults on three of the gun towers, Grayson would have to reach his objective via treacherous sewers, canals, and heavily fortified positions. Grayson had once made it clear he would never take military orders again, but Cartwright knew if the mission were dangerous enough, he could be counted on to volunteer. I often thought that Grayson took these suicide missions because he had a death wish of his own, that his brother's death had been too much for him. I did not realize until much later how wrong I was. Major Country, we have just destroyed the East Tower. What's your status? Finishing with the South Tower. Grayson, report. Do you read? Damn it, what's taking you so long? I've had some technical difficulties, but the target's inside. Relax. I'll relax when the sky is safe. Water intake valves located. Place your charge on a pylon for maximum effect. Take valves destroyed. Heading for the tower. Second squadron has reached the final marker. Changing course to south southeast heading. Private Grayson, get in the boat. We can reach the gun tower from the water. 
I will show you the way of the Marquis. I don't know how I made it this long without you. The speed with which the Chimera were completing fortifications surprised even the Marquis. Two weeks before, the Chimera guns that now towered over Rotterdam did not exist. Grayson and Marquis Colonel Roland Mallory would have to set aside their personal differences long enough to infiltrate and destroy the final gun tower. Failure to do so meant that the second wave of transports would be destroyed. The fate of myself and every soldier traveling in the second wave of transports lay in the hands of James Grayson. Listen to me. I have just destroyed two gun towers. If you want to survive, just shut up and listen. Aye, aye, Captain. It's Colonel Mallory, Private. Come on, then. Lead, follow, or get out of the bloody way. That's way to the firing platform. Give me a boost. Keep it steady. Now! It's about to fire again. Come on. You'll never make it. Jump out of the way. Bollocks! Stupid midget. Griffin, you are in the loading room. Navigate the machinery and jump in. Then meet me on the upper deck. And keep an eye out for slip scuds. All this shit, because Marquis Intel didn't spot the gun towers. Not towers destroyed. That was your doing, Bouchard? That's handy work for a broad. Use your auger on that shield. Try to short circuit the panel. And when it's down, I'll destroy the power cells. Savvy? Stupid beefeater. Merda. The bloody dropship spotted us. Give me that lock. I'll shoot the bastard from the sky and clear our route down. Here. Hurry, Tommy! Keep up! Just to be clear, Tommy, Bouchard insisted we recruit you, but I don't trust you. If you pull any shit in my army, it's off with your head. Fuck you, Mallory. Grayson destroyed the Chimera and anti-aircraft gun, opening a window for the second squadron. Within hours, we were able to pass through, bringing supplies and reinforcements. At a makeshift command center on the outskirts of Rotterdam, plans were quickly drawn up and assignments made. Cartwright would lead a task force to the south to intercept a Chimera and Earth mover that was heading towards Luxembourg. I would take the remainder of second squadron to Luxembourg, where plans for the attack on Paris were being finalized. Grayson would accompany Bouchard to Bonn, under the command of Marquis Colonel Roland Mallory. Scouts investigating the dried up Rhine River discovered a massive Chimera facility at Bonn. Carriers were spotted outside the structure's dome. Bouchard and her father had been studying the Chimera conversion process for months. The raw materials used to create new menials human bodies had become scarce after the initial invasion. Hybrids, menials, and greyjacks had already begun to vanish by June 1951. All over Europe, the original conversion centers were found abandoned in the process of being dismantled by Chimera drones. But this did not mean the Chimera were dying out. 
Marquis scouts were reporting intensified activity at new Chimera conversion facilities. How are they operating? Where were new raw materials coming from? Bouchard, with Grayson's help, intended to find out. Roland, grab my notebooks. What are you going to do with that? What are those for? <laughs> you think you're going to blow that up? Something like that? Look, Grayson, you are here because of your field experience. I need you, but we are here to find out what they are doing. You British, always wanting to blow things up. It will not work here. Hey, I'm okay with that. Look around all you want, but when you're done, this place is going up. On march! Let's move out! Come on, Tommy. I want you in front of me. We must follow the carriers. They will lead us to the heart of that conversion facility. Watch your footing. The whole place looks like an earthquake zone. We survived two years of Chimeran occupation without your help, Private. Watch out! Grayson, behind you! Whoa! Grayson! You damaged it! Let's go! Where's Bouchard? We got separated by that machine. She and Mallory escaped. Down there! Let's kill this thing and move out. We want to broke it ammunition. It's the only thing that seems to work. Our rifles may as well be strange. We left most of our ammo on the second floor. We've lost a lot of men trying to retrieve it. You and your men distract it while I make a dash for the ammo. They said you were crazy, Grayson. But this just might work. Let's head down there. Ah, go on without me! I'll stand guard. Something tells me when you come back up, trouble will follow. What a jaded little sod. I kinda like you. The Bonn facility was a massive structure that defied all knowledge of human engineering. Not because of the dome itself, which stretched out across 15 square miles at the edge of the Chimera construction zone, but because of the complex the Chimera had built beneath the city. An entire river, one of the largest in Western Europe, passed beneath the dome and vanished, plummeting into a chasm over a mile in depth. Bouchard's father thought the Chimera were using the water as part of their new conversion process. But without Grayson, she would never live to find out if her father was right. <sighs> Approaching a large cave. <clears throat> the tubes are enclosed. <clears throat> I won't be able to breathe. Oh, God. That's where I am. Move your arms. Do something so I can see you. Where are you? I found you. I'm right above you. Find an air pocket. Stay alive. Oh, God damn it, no! Don't worry. I'm getting you out of there. Oh, oh come on! Oh, Jesus, no! Not again! Rain! Oh, 
I'm having fish tonight. Come in. Don't leave without us. Oh, he's a dead man. Bloody hell, how do I get through that thing? I've never seen one this big before. Hope I brought enough TNT. Should be more than enough time. In the lower levels of the facility, Grayson had to endure crushing pressure and intense extremes of temperature as he searched for Rain Bouchard. To reach the lower depths, he had just to follow the network of structures that controlled the water flow, the millions of gallons per minute siphoned from the diverted rime, which poured through the maze of underground tubing like blood through a vast steel embryo. Should be close. Just hold on. Mallory, I've located Bouchard. We'll be topside soon. That bird had better be waiting. <coughs> James, you saved my life. Oh my god, I almost died. I thought I'd never see my father again. We don't have much time. Molly, come in. I'm bringing Bouchard up now. Have medics ready. What have you done to her? I'll have you court-martialed. Again. Stay here. my equipment I didn't look for your gear I was too busy trying to save your life you didn't do anything stupid did you where are your explosives uh, probably with your samples we have to get out of here now stand back watch out uh, what are you doing I just found a way out. James, wait. Thank you for coming down here. To get me. I know how hard this is to be inside another facility and not destroy it. Yeah, well, uh, come on, before Mallory ditches us. Do you know how to operate this? If those gorillas can drive one, so can I. Be there in two hours. Right. Car right out. Look, I know you're still angry, but we don't have time for this shit. Cartwright needs us to rendezvous. I don't give a damn what Cartwright wants. Thanks to you, the carriers are leaving and they're not coming back. If we don't follow them now, we lose them. 
Cartwright is arse over elbows. I don't like it any more than you do, but human lives are at stake. You blew it up against my orders, and now we don't have a choice. Roland, are we loaded up? Molly, you tell her. Those are your people in Luxembourg. Her father. Come on, Molly, tell her. Stop that shit, Brandon. Roland, don't you think I know that? Luxembourg is going to fall. We cannot save them. We need to follow the carriers, and we need to do it now. If my father were here, it is what he would do. This is the only thing that will stop them. Look, I'm not going to argue. You saved my life down there. I know that. But don't forget, if it weren't for me, you would have faced the firing squad. By all accounts, we are even. We're taking the VTOL. We don't have time to argue. We can radio Parker, she can send scouts out. Oh. I am sorry, James. But you are right. We do not have time to argue. Grayson here. Over. Oh, Grayson. I thought maybe you'd gotten lost. Again. And you were all ready for another court-martial, right? There's been a delay is all. My transport's gone. I'm gonna have to find another way to get to you. Grayson out. Grayson took the commandeered Chimera machine and headed south into the area the Marquis called the Chimera Construction Zone. Bouchard's father and other researchers had no idea what the Chimera were building. Only that the zone occupied hundreds of square miles and was growing. Recon missions sent in to investigate never returned. Cartwright's mission to stop the Earth Mover was only the latest to fail. Grayson had been very lucky. Traveling through the trenches had allowed him to escape the notice of the patrolling Chimera dropships. But Grayson's luck was about to run out. Bravo and Charlie companies, what's your status? On our approach now, sir. And what of you, Bravo? Report. Bravo, come in, damn it! The cavalry's here, Carl Wright. Grayson, brilliant timing. Catch up to Bravo and help them destroy their Earth Mover. I'll help, but only for the refugees in Luxembourg. I'm not in your army, Carl Wright. You kicked me out, remember? Carl Wright. What did you say I had to do to get past these gates? A little thing called ingenuity. Never mind. I remember. I have to blow up their bloody power stations. Grayson used the machine's ID beacon to penetrate deep into the trenches. The only way Grayson could survive in the Chimera construction zone was to navigate the vast network of earthworks, staying below ground level where roaming fleets of drones and machines could not easily find him. While Cartwright headed towards the second earth moon, Grayson worked his way through the Chimera construction zone. Miles of trenches had to be traversed on foot. He had only hours to stop the Earth Mover from crashing the Luxembourg's outer perimeter. Cartwright, Grayson here. My transport's done. I'm gonna have to hump it to your local on foot. Without the Chimera beacon, you won't have a decoy. Stay in the trenches. Roger that. On my way. Company 
Rescue's gone. Grayson, double time. You have to take out that Earth Mover on your own. Can you handle it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But only because you asked politely. Grayson had to navigate a maze of alien technology to find the second Earth Mover. Destroying it would not be easy, but the lives of thousands depended on Grayson's ability to stop the Earth Mover before it reached Luxembourg. Lucky Command, this is Colonel Melody. I am with Lieutenant Bouchard. We are en route to Luxembourg. Request emergency clearance to land. Put me through to my father. Tell him we've discovered the carrier's destination and stopped. We've been... At least I'm not stuck on foot for nothing. Cartwright, burrows are here. Acknowledged. Oh, avoid their clouds. And I mean that. The rankest thing I've ever smelled. And I eat British food. Grayson, come in. Report, damn you. The Earth Movers are closing in on the Marquis Fortress. Evacuation is impossible. Parker, don't start the evac yet. I'll stop this bucket of bolts if it's the last thing I do. Wonderful. Though Grayson had stopped the Earth Mover, it was too late. Chimera forces were already alerted to the Marquis presence in Luxembourg. Plans for our assault on the Paris Tower were nearing completion when the Chimera struck. Our escape routes cut off by their machines and drones, we were forced to use our last VTOLs to evacuate to the only remaining safe zone, a refugee camp which the Chimera had not yet discovered. It was imperative that the Marquis research into the Chimera conversion process done by men like Bouchard's father not be lost. Founded in 1939, the Military Defense Commission's primary goal was to research the Chimera and find a weapon that could destroy them. Based on his ongoing research, Dr. Claude Bouchard felt that the Marquis were close to a breakthrough, a serum that could prevent the Chimera from converting humans. But if Luxembourg fell before the evacuation was complete, his research would be lost. I can't hear you, Parker. Come again? Oh, the reception's piss poor down here. Our evacuation aircraft are having trouble lifting off. I'm getting too old for this shit. That doesn't sound good. It sounds bloody unpleasant. Something big's coming our way. Oh my god! <laughs> Frogs won't open the door, huh? This could be our tomb, mate. No need scraping that mug of yours tonight. The perimeter's been compromised. I'll head to the bunkers. You go to the hangar and get those birds airborne. Move fast. Burrowers always bring a trail of riffraff in their wake. Engines at 50% capacity. Transports are grounded until we get the power back on. Can you help secure the generator room? Without power, it's lights out for everyone. Why the fuck not? Ah, 
Work, damn you! Why isn't that door open? That's for Barn. They're enough for me. We are even. That's because I don't like you. Where's Bouchard? Are you trying to ditch again? In an opportune time for a murder, Grayson. I am an officer here. Who's going to fly the Vitor? You? Your brother's jacket hardly makes you a pilot. The evacuation zone is overcrowding. We need those aircraft now. Get out of my way. You're a frog. The doors are opening! Everyone out! Grace, Parker is missing. In her last contact, she was heading for the communications center. I'm still inside. I'll find Parker. I'd love to wait for you, Tommy. But they need me at the LZ. Big surprise, Molly. You better not be there when I arrive. That is, if. The comp center is on an abandoned level. Take the service elevator to reach it. As the inner defenses fell, all surviving forces were ordered to the Luxembourg walls, where I, along with other British and Marquis leaders, awaited the last of the VTOL transports. Now it was a race against time, as we attempted to hold off the advancing Chimera, while our escape routes were closed off, one by one. Supposed to be topside evacuating refugees. Long range radios are down. It's bloody chaos up there. Com centers through that door, but it's locked. I can't break in. These rats are all over. I'll stand guard. You get that door open. Com restored. You can reach the flight deck via that hallway. I'm heading down to the labs to extract Dr. Bouchard. Wrong. You get topside and help evacuate those refugees. I'll drag the old bugger out. Now go. This isn't your responsibility. You don't have to do it. If the old man thinks he can destroy the Chimera once and for all, then of course I have to save him. James, you've changed since I last saw you. It's the five o'clock shadow. Marquis won't issue us razors. I'm serious. In London, you swore you would never again serve under us. Now look at you. Don't get used to it. I'm bound to come to my senses before this is over. Go. Take care of yourself, Parker. So much happened. We don't know what this will do. Don't get scared now. This is everything we've worked for. Now give me your arm. Rain Bouchard and her father had spent the last two years researching the evolving Chimera conversion process. With Grayson's help inside the Bond facility, Rain had obtained samples of amniotic fluid that would prove crucial to her father's work. But with Luxembourg now under siege, would we be able to get Dr. Bouchard's work out intact? Come on, old man. I've got orders to get your ass up to the transports. Who are you? This area is restricted. Rain? James? Grayson, what are you doing here? I shouldn't be surprised you beat me here. I did have to walk after all. James, let me explain. The last time you explained something, I woke up with a cracked skull. We've discovered a weakness in the Chimera, the carriers. Once the serum is complete, we can infect the carriers, kill them all. Do you know what this means? That you can't be trusted? Doc, you're leaving with me. Now. Oh, you 
Get back here! Never! Allow him to finish! We are so close. Infecting the carriers, killing them, the Chimera would have no way to transport human bodies. I've got orders to get you out. But, but James, you don't understand. We can destroy the carriers and, and, and stop the conversion process for good. I'm here for the old man. You want to stay here and complete his work? That's fine with me. The serum is our only chance to destroy the Chimera, soldier boy. I can't leave now. to the womb. Save them all. No. You're going to be okay. We deliver it together, remember? Science saves the world, right, Papa? Oh, Christ. Rain, he's gone. Let's move. The line's been wiped out. I need reinforcements. Anyone who can lift a rifle, get down here now. That's it, Rain. We go now! You keep drawing weapons on me, Tommy. I'm beginning to take it personally. I'm sure you get a lot of that. Ah, my arm! Keep your bloody hands off me! Goodbye, Papa. Oh. Sir, it's the Lieutenant! Rain! This is insane. What have you done to her? Rain! It's James! The blood my father took. It's too much excitement. I am fine. Cartwright needs my help on the defensive line. Mallory will take you to the evacuation zone. Can you handle that, Molly? I have kept my people alive for two years. Rain, come. My crew is waiting for us at the field hospital. Get her out alive, and maybe. Just maybe, I'll stop looking for a reason to kill you. Don't fret, Tommy. We shall meet again. You have a knack for survival. The tenacity of a cockroach. And you have a knack for squirming out of danger. Slippery as a bloody eel. When Luxembourg's outer defenses collapsed, hundreds of evacuees, including Rain Bouchard and her father, were still awaiting transport. We had to rely on soldiers like James Grayson, who were willing to man the bunker guns in a desperate attempt to hold off the Chimera and buy all of us more time to escape. Colonel, enemy armor is advancing on the SD. Our detour is taking fire. En route now. Do not leave without us. Rain, you must move faster. We'll never make it to our detour. We can't hold them off! Stop one! Car right. I'm here to bail your ass out. Again. Grayson, I don't have time for your cheek. We're in big trouble here. You have company. You mean that thing? I've got at least a minute. Plenty of time. Full thrust! Lift off! Great shooting, Marine! Ah. You took a round to the shoulder. Minor scratch, that's all. Minor scratch my ass. Pillbox is infested with those apes, and they're slaughtering refugees at the field hospital. Let's get some grenades in that window. Right, I'll advance. A little suppressing fire would be useful. We must hurry! Strap in, Rain. What the hell's wrong? Why aren't we lifting off? That computer's hit! We can't fly without it! 
Where are you going? I've got a delivery to make. Repairs complete. Get out while you can. What are you waiting for? Ah, move over. I will fly. Nice command. This is Colonel Mallory. En route now. Have a medical team standing by for Lieutenant Bouchard. stubborn and she won't leave until we get there. You spry bastard. That's everyone. Dust off. It took two hours for the transports to reach the Marquis's last remaining safe zone. This small camp held all that remained of the Marquis. We wondered if it would be enough to carry out the final assault on the Paris Tower. Plans were drawn up quickly. Cartwright would lead a frontal assault on the Paris defenses and the Chimera Tower. While we had hoped that destroying the tower would have the same effect we had seen in London, the Marquis had a backup plan as well. Carriers were seen moving in and out of a structure Bouchard called the Chrysalis Lair. It was thought that if the serum Bouchard's father had synthesized could be smuggled inside and injected into the structure's systems, the entire Chimera conversion process could be contaminated and brought to a halt. Cartwright's assault on the main Chimera tower would provide a diversion that would allow a smaller force to enter Paris from the east. For months, the Cloven had been using the catacombs to bypass the Chimera outer defenses. It would be impossible to move a large force through the narrow passageways, but one person moving alone could pass through unnoticed by Chimera forces. Rain and Grayson argued over who should go. Because of her experience and knowledge of how to deploy the serum, Bouchard was chosen, but Grayson would not listen to reason. You can't let her go. The decision's been made, James. You have to let it drop. She's infected. What are you talking about? Let go of me! Let go of her, Private, or I will take your head off. I saw her father drawing her blood in Luxembourg. Rain is the breakthrough. Tell them, Rain! Oh, so Let go of Let stop it! Tell him. Take him to debris! Lock him up! Get off me! She was infected in Bonn! Tell them, Rain! You can't let her go! True, I'm it's telling you! She'll kill us all! I had to see you, James. It's funny, you know. The rats here in France are bigger than those in London. I don't blame you for being angry. I am leaving for Paris soon. I'd wave goodbye if I could reach those bars. You will be free by then. I will tell the guards before I go. After it's too late to stop you. James, I'm sorry. <coughs> You're infected, Ray. <coughs> Just like my brother was. You know what I have to do. Are you going to kill me, James? Do it. James. Why did you come here? I don't... James. There's nothing you can say. I didn't come to talk.
What are you doing here? What do you want? Just wondering if you had a light. <coughs> hey! <coughs> hey, hold on! Cartwright! You're going to have to hurry, mate. They left an hour ago. Mallory went with her? We don't think so. We think he followed Bouchard after she left. We? Here. You'll need this. In case you don't find her. As Grayson moved into the outskirts of Paris, he could see that Cartwright's assault on the Chimera Tower had begun. The clock was now ticking. Grayson would have to reach the Chrysalis Lair and deliver the serum while the Chimera Defense Forces were being diverted. Though he'd had an hour's head start, Grayson caught up with Mallory at the entrance to the catacombs alone. Tracking Bouchard and Colonel Mallory had been as easy as following their boot prints in the snow. The important question was, would Grayson remember to question Colonel Mallory before he killed him? Guys like frogs, better than roast beef. So keep quiet. Savvy? <sighs> Don't be stupid, Tommy. They're cloven, not cannibals. Tell me where Bouchard went, or you'll find out the hard way. Through here, through here. I lost her. I swear on my life. Your life? I'll take you up on that. <laughs> Nice try, Molly. But I'm going first. Grayson, you are so predictable. <laughs> I forgot. If Bouchard went this way, when you find the Cloven, tell them value beats. They will love you. <laughs> Mallory! Bloody freak show. Mallory, come in. Mallory! What the... Ah! As Grayson fought his way deeper into the subterranean maze of rooms and chambers, he began to discover more and more evidence that while insane and incoherent, at least appearing so to us, the Cloven had a complex language and society, Grayson began to realize that the Cloven were in the catacombs for a purpose, a purpose closely related to Bouchard's mission to contaminate the Chimera's new conversion process. Later, Marquis leaders would ask how it was possible for Rain Bouchard to travel through the Cloven stronghold, alone and unassisted. But if Grayson's assertions were true, 
Then Bouchard was infected long before she got to Paris. Little was known about the complex relationship between the Chimera and the Cloven. But one thing was clear. Related genetically, the two species could coexist in the same region, tolerating each other's presence. It's entirely possible that Bouchard literally strolled through the catacombs completely unharmed. my knife in your heart. Choke on that, you big iron bastard. Grayson now knew why the Cloven were in the catacombs, to gain access to the hundreds of thousands of human bodies that were being stored there. Later, we would wonder if it was just an easy food source, or if there wasn't some reason, some ritual, born of the Cloven's hive mind, that would be forever inexplicable to us. All Grayson knew was that Bouchard, followed by Mallory, had left the abandoned processing complex beneath the city, and was heading towards the Chimera Tower that she called the Chrysalis Lair. It would take everything he had to find her. Oh my god. Rain. Did you see this? All these bodies. Thousands of them. Women. Sisters. Daughters. All I wanted to do was avenge my brother. But I was being selfish. I see that now. Then you've changed your mind. Or do you still intend to murder them all? Hell yes. I'm gonna wipe the Chimera from the face of the Earth. James. Leaving my radio behind. I don't need the distraction or temptation to turn back. You're hesitant for a reason. Trust your instincts. I can help you deliver the serum. Goodbye, James. Rain, no, don't! Oh, shit. Mallory, if you're close, try and stop her. Come on! Mallory! Stay with me, Bouchard. I'm on my way. Paris had been transformed beyond recognition. From his vantage point inside the Chimera machine, Grayson could see only a maze of structures, a confusing web of iron and glass. The Eiffel Tower, once the crown jewel of the Parisian skyline, was now a mere pillar of what would become a vast Chimera city. A city unlike anything ever seen by mankind. And unless Grayson succeeded, one that no man would live to see. While he knew that Bouchard must already be somewhere inside, he was driven by something he could never explain, to find her. Grayson, come in. Are you there? Parker, Grayson here. Grayson, thank God. Where are you? Have you found Bouchard? Long story. Bouchard's gone radio silent. We can't count on her, but I've got the vial you gave me. I see the chrysalis lair now. I'm gonna shove the serum right up their ass. Off your uncle. Marquis forces and Cartwright's British commandos were successful in pushing through the Chimera outer defenses. Now they were in a desperate battle for the main Chimera Tower. Cartwright's assault had accomplished its objective by diverting Chimera forces away to the south, reducing the number Grayson had to face as he fought his way through the outer structures of the Chrysalis Lair. Even with Chimera forces diverted southwards by Cartwright's assault, 
It would be impossible to reach the tower over land. But Grayson had driven the Chimera machine as far as he could, up to the brink of the frozen Seine. To reach the lair itself, Grayson would have to get past its outer fortifications. The only way to get past the outer walls was to go under them. Later, Grayson could not say why he left his brother's jacket behind. It seemed almost symbolic, a ritual not unlike that of the Cloven, as if Grayson wanted to leave behind the part of his past that had destroyed him, that being submerged beneath the frozen Seine might somehow become a ritual cleansing. Regardless, there can be no doubt that the James Grayson who entered the Seine was not the same man we had sentenced to death only weeks before. Cartwright, Grayson here. Your diversionary attack's working. I've reached the Seine. You have to hurry, Grayson. I'm not sure how much longer we can sustain our assault. I should reach the lair within an hour. All depends on how many damn gorillas they've got left. Parker, tell the McKee they can stop trying to contact Bouchard. I found her. Grayson, are you there? Come in! Grayson! Or should I say, I found what's left of her. What the... Mallory! I didn't kill her! You gave her hope the conversion centers could be explored! Research conducted! You drove her to this tunnel! You are responsible! Mallory! She used you! From the beginning! You're infected! You're becoming one of them! She lied to you, Roland! Just like she lied to me! No, Tommy! I chose this! To be more than human! Go ahead, shoot me! You can't hurt me now! We'll see about that. Killed hundreds of Chimera Molly, thousands, including my own brother. But I've never enjoyed it until now. We're out of time. Get back. Get back. Carl Wright. I've achieved the objective. Say again, I'm at ground zero. Get your men out of there. Roger that. Pull back, pull back. Get those men out of there. Cartwright, good job. I'd have never made it this far if these gorillas hadn't been distracted. Good luck, Grayson. We'll see you on the other side. Somehow I doubt it. So far, nothing that's gone in has ever come out. Cartwright out. Go, go, move out. Little was known about the new Chimera conversion process outside of Dr. Claude Bouchard's research. We knew that until recently no female Chimera had ever been seen. Human females, it seemed, had been stored in the catacombs DNA facility for use in later phases of the Chimera invasion. Bouchard wrote that inside the chrysalis lair was a structure she called Le Coeur de la Mer, the mother chamber. It was here that the Chimera DNA was implanted into human subjects before they were taken to facilities like the one in Bonn. To deploy the serum and infect the carriers, Grayson would have to enter this heart, the womb where the Chimera hags were conceived in the bodies of human females. Colonel Roland Mallory disappeared in Paris and has to this day never been seen again. Later, Marquis Command questioned Grayson, but Grayson had nothing to say and the case was never remanded to military authority. 
Once, I had also asked Grayson what transpired inside the Chrysalis Lair, and all he would ever say was that everything changed. Parker, I'm inside the lair. It's like no conversion complex I've ever seen. Grayson, I can't read you. Come in. Grayson! I'm nearing the upper levels of the lair. Carriers moving in and out, like blood vessels carrying oxygen. This is what Rain discovered. It's like a bloody Chimera assembly line. The carriers retrieve the bodies from storage, like the chamber beneath Paris, and bring them here, where the transformation process begins. And where it's going to end. Screw it. To deploy the serum and infect the carriers, Grayson would have to enter this heart, the womb where the Chimera hags were conceived in the bodies of human females. Right. What's happened to you? No. What have they done? You promised to help me, James. Uh, get out of my head! You think you can resist, but you are mistaken. Join us. The way my brother joined you? It's too late, Raid. The serum's already spreading. Like a virus. The entire system's collapsing. How many carriers have already left infected, Raid? How long before this is all gone? you when I had the chance. You can't do this. You are simply worthy to us. Resistance. They are worthy to us. In the Tinoco, we will not stop. You're wrong, Raid. Or whatever the hell you are. The serum is working. Your father's virus is spreading. Soon, every carrier in the world will be dead. James! <laughs> We are not dead. The serum spread. Set off triggers. They're so advanced. Right. What do you say? Carriers gone. Just triggered new types. Spinners. James, no matter what we do, they Rain. just keep evolving. Rain. 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 Goodbye, Ray.
Cartwright's task force was successful, just as in London. When the Paris Tower fell, Chimera forces everywhere in Western Europe became disorganized, confused, and began to die. Grayson was also successful. At least it seemed so at first. Dr. Bouchard's serum worked as designed. Carriers spread the contaminated fluid from the mother chamber to facilities all over France and Germany. The new conversion process ground to a halt. But while Western Europe had earned a short reprieve, reports continued to come in from Russia, the Balkans, and Spain. Chimera forces were on the move. Vast fleets of Chimera dropships were being constructed, their targets and destinations unknown. Grayson never talked about what happened inside the Chrysalis Lair to anyone. But it was obvious to everyone that Grayson was changed in ways we would never understand. Did you ever find any sign of her? Bouchard, I mean. Yeah. I found her. She was already dead. I don't know what happened in there, James, but don't let her death destroy you the way you let your brothers. It's time to bury our dead. I don't need a lecture, Parker. I'll be fine. Wait. I've got something for you. British command has cleared your record. We're offering you a field commission. How does Major Grayson sound? <laughs> well, I sit in my arse all day like Cartwright. Hey, speak of the devil. Grayson, I've been looking for you. I think this is yours. Some of the boys found it during mop-up. I thought you'd want it. It belongs here. As someone said, it's time to bury our dead. Keep it, James. Your brother would want you to. Maybe he would have at that. <sighs> Goodbye, Colonel. Major. Goodbye, James. Hey, I hear the McKee have a replacement opening for a Colonel. Maybe I'll apply. Goodbye, James. Shall we? There's still a war going on, last I checked. We never saw Grayson again. He did join the Marquis, volunteering to lead a dangerous mission into the heart of Russia to find the source of the Chimera invasion. During the Battle of Warsaw, 12th of June, 1953, the Marquis listed Grayson as missing in action. But I had to wonder. Among the Russian refugees, there were rumors of a British soldier seen roaming the streets of Minsk, Kiev, and Moscow. A man they called the Cloven Killer. Perhaps Grayson did die in Warsaw. But I like to think that somewhere out there, James Grayson had found another cause worth living for.